Hello everyone, I hope you are all doing well. So, as you might already know if you've watched the first two of my Inktober videos, I've been attempting the challenge set by Jake Parker of Inktober. Um, if you want to know more about Jake Parker and the Inktober challenge, if you have a look at my first Inktober video, I think I've linked his details below that one. Um, I'm not following Jake's prompts for 2017. I'm using my own prompt and I've called it Allotment Life. This particular one, this video, this these drawings, this is um, day 22 through to 31. This is all about the creatures that uh, visit my allotment. The second sheet was all about the tools that I use on my allotment and the first sheet was all about the fruit and veg um, that all my harvest that I'd had from my allotment. Um, I'm not strictly sticking to Inktober as in I'm not really using ink I'm using well I'm not using ink <laughs> at all I'm using uh, watercolors. I did use a little bit of ink, but not very much. It was, uh, but I wanted to practice my watercolors um, on this Inktober challenge, um, so, and this I thought this would be a really good way of getting my backside in gear. So that's what I decided to do. I also, rather than um, doing a sketchbook page a day, which I thought would be a little bit much for me really was I watched a video by a lady called Wendy Iris and again I think I've linked Wendy's video in my very first one of the these three videos so if you want to know a bit more about Wendy's um, video I've linked that in my uh, below the, my first video um, but what I what I liked about what Wendy did was she used one sheet of paper and did all 31 of her um, drawings on that one sheet. I didn't manage to get 31 drawings on my sheet. My first sheet had 11 drawings on it, that was my fruit and veg. My second sheet had 10 images on it, that was my tools and this one also has 10 images on it of my creatures. Um, but I just liked that idea, it didn't seem too overwhelming to do that and I also wanted to have some finished pieces if you like at the end of it that I could hang on my wall so I've now got one sheet that's got my fruit and veg one that's got my tools and now this one that's got my creatures on it and they all mean something you know that each sheet means has a common link to it and then all three of them are all commonly linked because they're all part of my they're all related to my allotment um so what else can i tell you um i oh, i'll just quickly tell you about the tools that i used um i used my signo uniball the white pen to do some of the highlights where i didn't reserve highlights i used my pigma micron black 05 on occasions not very many occasions but on occasions uh, for any little dark spots that I needed I used a number six and a number three round mainly in this sheet of uh, my creatures I did have my number 10 round out but I can't remember using it that often I don't know if I did really but I had it out anyway just in case um, I was using my Winsor & Newton watercolors there was a mixture of Cotman and professionals in there um, I got a set of Cotman watercolors and then when I see the professionals on offer in Hobbycraft I normally just buy them so I've got a mixture of those and the paper that I painted on was my Bockingford watercolor paper which is um, it's a uh, cold press which is lovely to paint on I love that paper um, so just the same I've, I've used the same kind of principle on the 
on all three um, sheets where I um, well as I've laid down lighter washes to begin with tried to remember to reserve my lights um, I'm a nightmare for forgetting to reserve the lights but I mean if you do forget to reserve the lights you can always go in um, with a, a wet paintbrush clean wet paintbrush and then dampen that area down then go back in with a dry paintbrush and lift out some colour I find that's quite a useful way to um, bring in some highlights and also might use my uniball white pen where I need really nice bright highlights for say like an eye or something like that um, and then I've just kept on layering over um, and bringing in deep darker washes to give my little creatures dimension and then just bringing in the final darker areas where I want the shaded areas to be so I think that is everything that I can think of to tell you there are only a couple more creatures to go I think so I'm going to shut up now and let you watch me with my process if you fancy watching me with my process <laughs> okay so thanks guys for watching as always and I will speak to you soon thanks bye bye